Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Maria Carey sues for copyright over All I Want for Christmas is You. International superstar Maria Carey is being sued by songwriter Andy Stone over her mega hit holiday single, All I Want for Christmas is You. According to an article from BBC News, Stone says he co writes a song with the same name five years earlier and argues that Carey exploited her popularity and styled. BBC shared that despite sharing a title, the two songs appear musically different, but Stone claims Carey caused confusion and did not ask for permission. Carey has not yet responded. Her version of All I Want for Christmas Is You is one of the best-known Christmas records of all time. Since appearing on the album Merry Christmas in 1994, it has stopped the charts in several countries, and by 2017, had reported the earned carry more than 600 million in royalties. The song has been streamed 1 billion times on Spotify. Stone, who performs under the name Vince Vance, was the band Vince Vance and Villains, is claiming at least 20 million in damage according to BBC. The complaint says Carey, as well as her co-writer Walzo and the record label Sony Music Entertainment, have earned undeserved profits from the song, arguing that the defendants knowingly, within fully, and intentionally engage in a campaign to infringe copyright. Stone argues that he never gave permission for his song to be used for any purpose including the creation of a derivative work. BBC News said it is not clear why the legal challenge has only been made now, 28 years after Carey's song was released. The complaint say Stone's lawyer first contacted Carey and her co-defendant last year, but were unable to come to any agreement. Police charge man who attacked another with machete. The police have arrested and charged a man accused of attacking another with a machete in Brownstone since and last year. The man has been identified as 25-year-old Jeffrey Shirley, a lifeguard of Fairview, Montego Bay, St. James. Shirley has been charged with wounding with intent in the December 4, 2021 incident. Reports are that about 8 a.m., the complainant was walking along the roadway when he was pounced upon by the accused, who was armed with a machete. Shirley then allegedly inflicted several wounds to the complainant's upper body. The police were summoned and the complainant was transferred to hospital where he was admitted. Shirley was later arrested and charged. Saint and man charged with assault at common law, illegal possession of gun. 20-year-old Craig Tracy of Windsor Heights, St. Anne, has been charged with assault at common law and illegal possession of firearm after he allegedly brandished a firearm and threatened to kill a man in his community. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that on Sunday, May 22, about 8 a.m., the complainant and Tracy had an altercation when Tracy pulled a firearm and threatened to kill him. The incident was reported to the police and Tracy was subsequently arrested after he was positively identified by the complainant. Over 330k lost in housebreaking incident, man charged. Over $200,000 documents and a safe value at $130,000 were stolen in an incident in Almanton, Kingston 4 on Saturday, May 28, 2022. The police have arrested the suspect, who they have identified as 28-year-old Sergei Margon, of Turnton Park, Kingston 5. Margan is charged with housebreaking and larceny. According to police reports, about 6.30 p.m., the complainant left home and upon his return, it was observed that his door was unlocked and the item stolen. The police were alerted and Margan was arrested the same day after his motor car was searched and the stolen items found in his possession. He was subsequently charged on Friday, June 3rd, and is scheduled to appear before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Friday, June 10. Government says it respects court ruling in police overtime pay dispute. The government says it respects Friday's ruling by the Constitutional Court which sided with rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF in their dispute with administration regarding overtime pay. The claim was brought by the Jamaica Police Federation, which represents the rank and file cops which had accused the government of failing to keep promises made in, in respect of their overtime payment. In a lengthy statement late Friday afternoon, 
the Minister of Finance and Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, said the material facts in the matter were not in dispute, with the government accused of being high-handed in the now settled dispute and of disrespecting the police. Clark has provided background information he said was missing from the public discourse. He noted that in 2008, the government of Jamaica, GOG, and the Federation agreed that all rank and file members of the police force would receive pay for an additional 10 hours regardless of whether they work in excess of 40 hours. This was to be implemented until a system that could capture actual hours worked was in place, said Clark. He said the Federation and the government affirmed that the additional hours arrangement in several heads of agreement entered into since 2008. In addition, since 2008, the government of Jamaica has paid these added hours to all rank and file members of the Jamaica Police Force. What was in dispute was the interpretation and implication of the facts, said Clark. He said that despite its effort, the government has not yet implemented a system for capturing actual hours worked by rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. On this basis, the claimant sought compensation retroactive from April 1, 2008 to the present for overtime actually worked across this period. The judgment delivered found that there is no scope for such a payment given the 10-hour overtime payment agreed to and accepted by the GOG and the Jamaica Police Federation since 2008 and which has been and continues to be paid, Clark stated. He said that the government, through the Ministry of National Security, has commenced the process of procuring the system for capturing the actual time work by police officers. This work commenced some time ago, and the central government budget submitted to Parliament in February 2002 contains a amount dedicated to the payment of this system, said Clark. The full court rule that the government was in breach of several heads of agreement for five contractual periods with the Police Federation relating to overtime pay. The court in its ruling declared that the heads of agreement entered between the Federation and the Ministry of Finance for the contract period April 2008 to March 2010, April 2015 to March 2017, and April 2018 to March 2019 are binding on the government. It said those heads of agreement constitute binding contracts between the parties and created a legitimate expectation among the members of the force. The court ordered that the defendants should before March 31, 2023, put in place a system which is in accordance with the terms agreed in the heads of agreement and which will capture the actual hours worked by JCF members in excess of 40 hours per week and that the members should thereafter be remunerated accordingly for such excess hours. The court further ruled that costs of the complainants against the defendant are to be taxed or agreed. However, on the issue of whether the claimants were entitled to damages, the court said that the agreement 10 or overtime payment accepted until the system was put in place represents agreed liquidated damages. In the claim, the Police Federation, now ahead by Corporal Roy James, sued the government because of frustration caused by the state's failure to keep promises made. According to the court, unchallenged evidence revealed that the existing manual recording system for the police force remains unreliable due to the integrity issues. The complainant further contended that a new system has not yet been established and further argued that they are contractually entitled to have the system established. The complainant to the government for a compensation which are actively computed from April 2008 to present for overtime actually worked in the period and sought declarations and orders as well as damages. Rural gangsters killing competitors for control of US $1 billion in lottery scamming proceeds, says Zhang. The change in criminal landscape in Jamaica has seen a sharp 53% rise in murders in the four western parishes in the police era 1, St. James Trelawney, Westmoreland and Hanover, and is the result of the fight over US $1 billion in lottery scamming money flowing into the sad section of the country. This was stated by the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Strong, during his contribution to the sexual debate in the House of Representatives on June 1. More formally referred to as advanced fee fraud, lottery scamming is flowing a rise in murders in deep rural areas 
as the changing criminal landscape presents a new headache for the government and law enforcement agencies. Chang described the development as an emerging major crisis while warning that Jamaica's democracy was at risk. The challenge with advanced fee fraud is that it is a white-collar job, Chang noted. He said it was particular to see white-collar crime associated with high level of killings. The security minister cited that white-collar criminals have no base, they are mobile, and present a more challenging risk for the police to intercept or apprehend. Chang shared that local law enforcement agencies were working with their international partners particularly in North America where the victims are being extorted. We have made progress but hundreds of people are involved, he said, while pointing out to the dozens of scammers have been apprehended and been extradited. According to Trang, who is also the Deputy Prime Minister, it is alleged that US $1 billion flows into Jamaica each year through this illicit source. That's a huge amount of money, and it provides a risk to the stability of our state because it not only buys guns that kill people and undermine and corrupt institutions, and indeed, what it is not yet known is its impact on the economy because a billion dollars is a huge amount of money. He pointed to the changing patterns of the inner gang, violence that occurs from the sharp increase into the homicide rates, explaining that gangs involving extortion drug dealing, turf control, and petty thievery will have a high incidence of community killing, which known tactically policing can deal with, as now appears to be happening in sections of the corporate area. On the other hand, gangs involving advanced fee fraud and transshipment of drugs tend to avoid community petty crimes but indulge in targeted killings of their competitors, said Chang. He told the House that this was evident in Era 1, which has seen the highest increase in killings. They use contract killers and are scattered in small groups in deep rural areas. They operate wherever cell phone connectivity is available, he said. Chung pointed to year-to-date crime statistics, which show that Era 4, which covers most of the corporate era, is experiencing a 70 fewer murders or a 32% decline over the corresponding period in 2021. Here we can see the huge impact that hotspot policing, the use of technology and effective analysis are having in the urban areas, he said. On the flip side, Era 1, which covers the four western parishes, is seeing 70 more murders or a 53 increase in the similar period. This is reflecting the significant shift of criminal activities to rural areas, where the use of hotspot policing and technology are far less effective. As a result, controlling the criminal violence in the deep rural spaces presents some challenges, Chang stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.